God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Jesus Christ came into the world that the gospel, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, that we may have salvation. There goes a waste of your taxpayers' money, but when you look up, look up to God, for His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, saves, and Jesus Christ saves alone. There is salvation, no other, for there is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Ye must be born again, the Bible proclaims. For righteousness is of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died upon Calvary's cross, that you might go to heaven. Heaven is not obtained by what you can do. God's Son, God, Jesus Christ, Acts 20:28, 20, has already fulfilled, has already satisfied God with a sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. So what you think you can do to please God is iniquity. Because Jesus said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's after professing, Well, God, I have religion. Well, God, I, I did this. Well, God, look at me. God, I'm a good person. There is none good. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because you are sinners, you will die. The wages of sin is death. And death is coming in your life. And you do not know when death is coming. And yet the Bible says this is the day of salvation. Judgment's coming. Prepare to meet thy God. And if you are an atheist and don't believe in God, the Bible still says prepare to meet thy God. You see, men think just because they come up with ideas and religion and science and math that God will be excluded. God will be approved of what man has to say. And the Bible says the ways of man is death. Jesus saves, and Jesus alone. We come here every week to preach Jesus Christ as salvation because we preach to you because you're going to die. And then when you die, you're going to wake up in eternity somewhere. And the Bible does speak about an afterlife. An afterlife of heaven or hell. And Jesus said about heaven, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. The scriptures say, not of works, least any man should boast. Boasting in the eternal life is about one, Jesus Christ. Minus Allah, minus Buddha, minus Mary. It's all about Jesus Christ. The Son of God, which take away the sin of the world, the Lamb. The precious blood of Jesus Christ, without spot, can wash you of your sin. And you are all sinners. One lie. One self. We became sinners because God told Adam and not to eat of the fruit. One fruit caused all the trouble
troubles and problems we got today. And not eating the fruit was because they rebelled against the Word of God. And rebelling against the Word of God became sin. And sin became death. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is Jesus Christ our Lord. When Adam and Eve took that fruit, they disobeyed what God told them not to do. And we stand 4,000, 6,000 years later, and man is still rejecting what God has to do in rebellion. For God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and you are not doing it. In either case of Adam and Eve and you today, you are disobeying God and that's a sin. For God has provided a way, the Bible says, the love of God is for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Your hope of going to a heaven is by Jesus Christ and no other. Only one man has ever been sinless. One man has been the sacrifice sought by God, and that's Jesus Christ. You can't go to another man with your sins because you're going to a man who is a sinner. That's like cleaning a carpet with mud. But the precious blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The iniquity, the iniquity that we have has been cleansed by Jesus Christ, and you must receive Him by hearing the word which we preach, and by believing upon Him and the, and the sacrifice that He has done through your heart. And you must confess with your mouth that you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must believe with your heart for salvation. The gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures is the merit that God will see for salvation for a man to get to heaven. And don't come to me on this, this glorious weekend and say, well, we're NASCAR fans, we're all Christians, why do you meet on a church day? Your NASCAR drivers can't even go right on a Sunday morning. Where God said in the book of Acts, meet on the first day of the week. God would not put beer stickers on His approval. God expects you to be holy, for God is holy. Holiness of God is to part from sin. He that knoweth that doeth good and doeth it not to him, it has sin. See, when you hear that God saves by Jesus Christ, you are without excuse because you have heard what the Bible has declared, and if you reject Jesus Christ, you are in sin. Never mind stealing, never mind lying. By rejecting God's offer in Jesus Christ, you are now a sinner. And sinners burn in hell. All the animals for all the Christians that just fell on the ground. There is a hell, and hell is full of Christ's rejectors along with you. See, a man goes into hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. There are wicked perverts in hell, and there are nice people in hell. The perverts and the nice people rejected Jesus Christ. You all get to go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. There's no difference. All have sinned. Sin is not in degree. There is one sin that will put you into the lake of fire which burns forever. Rejecting Jesus Christ. Imagine leaving the comforts of America, air-conditioned cars, fresh fruit,
stores, Walmart, and enter into a place where you'll be tormented for all eternity because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Enter ye the straight gate. The way of salvation is straight. It's narrow. It's Jesus Christ who said, I am the way. So if Jesus said, I'm the way, why are you relying on religion? Why are you re relying on your, your conduct? Why are you relying on what's something you can do when Jesus said, I am the way? You will stand before the holy, righteous Jesus Christ one day and profess that you are better than He is? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The narrow way through heaven is Jesus Christ. The only way through, through heaven is Jesus Christ. Jesus again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. That is the straight gate. He said, Preacher man, why do you keep pre preaching the same message, the same verses over and over? Until you get these verses right, we're going to go no further. You can't grow in hell. And John chapter 3 said, You are condemned already. And especially that you hear the preaching of the Word of God. So the, the, the straight gate. Now notice, people, I have the Bible open. I am reading to you the words of the Bible. I am not giving you no missile. I am not giving you no man's prophecy. I am giving you the Holy King James 1611 Bible. What I'm preaching to you is what God has said. And this Bible, it's red-lettered. Now why would it be red-lettered? Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. And the words that I'm reading to you are the words of Jesus Christ. Now, you don't believe that? At the great white throne judgment, you can tell Jesus what you think as he casts you off for all eternity. For well, I am opening and reading from the Bible. And I am reading from the words of Jesus Christ right now in Matthew chapter 7. Enter ye the straight gate. That's a command by God. God does not want you to go into hell. God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. And Jesus in his own words says, Go through the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction. And many there be which go there at. With our messages week after week after week, they ought to name this world right here Broadway. Because we have seen many people here, many vendors, many customers, many onlookers who have heard the gospel and have rejected it and have gone the broad way into the lake of fire. You would be like, you're going down this road, and that bridge is no there. And as you go down the road, you just fall into the flames of hell. And the only way you can get to the other side, by the bridge, is by the Calvary's cross. You have a bridge to God. It is the gospel how Christ died for our sins and was buried and arose again the third day. Now let me know one thing for you guys to hear. God is not a liar. He cannot, will not, and is not able to lie. He says, I'm the way, the truth. And what Jesus is saying is that there is two ways. There's a straight way that leads to heaven. And 
there's a broad way that leads to the lake of fire which burns forever. And Jesus has already told us that he is the way. And since he's the truth, he's not lying to us. Now somebody here can sell you bad strawberries and swindle you, and yet God has given us a book that way which is right. God is reaching out to you according to Isaiah 118. He says, come now, let us reason together. You see, God wants you to come. God has given us the book. God has told us, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because you're not going to be in church tomorrow morning. Most of you are going to be watching a bunch of idiots go left for 250 times. And you're going to call that a Christian activity on a Sunday morning. I call it stupid and rubbish, but I call the Word of God pure. I call the Lord Jesus Christ your way into heaven, your glory, the acceptable gift of God, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now, again, the broad way leads to destruction. And it's just full of people. And straight is the gate. And Jesus says, enter the straight gate. He does not want you to go the broad way. And what most worlds and cities have a broad way, what is on that broad way? Well, there's entertainment, there's the theater, there's the bars. Is that holy? No. You see, we're all sinners. And the rejection of Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, you become a rebellion of God by the gift, by the gospel, and that's how you're thrown into hell, by rejecting Jesus Christ. You see, adultery and drinking will not get you into hell. That is who you are. You are filthy with your sins. You can't appear before God because God is holy. In order to be, come before God, you've got to have your sins cleansed. And that cleansing is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, Jesus Christ died upon Calvary's hill. His blood shed for our sins. He paid the debt. He can wash away your sins. Or you can choose the broad way. You can do it yourself. Now the problem is, the only way to wash away your sins outside of Jesus Christ is you've got to be put into fire. And that fire is for all eternity. See, five fold from anybody that goes in hell is dumb. Because it's already been paid. If I were to tell you, say, listen, go down to this bank, and I've got a check there, and we'll pay all your bills off right now, you just have to go down to the bank and put your name on that check, and all your bills are paid. You'd be foolish not to, not to take advantage of that situation. You would run down to that bank, you would take that check, you would sign it, and pay for your bill. And yet Jesus Christ has said your sins are marked upon the cross of Calvary. You can be set free by the empty tomb. And you won't come. You think you're so good. Let me talk to your spouse. Let me talk to your parents and see how well you are. And if you can't get by your wife, you can't get by your dad, you're not going to get by God. Now the righteousness of Jesus Christ is he did nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. And yet they gave him a cross. Why did they give him a cross? Because he's the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He died as the Passover Lamb for the Jewish festival of the Passover. When God looks down, he sees his son or he sees Satan. Either or. And Jesus again says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, few there be that find it. You know, I see a vast amount of people here, and you make the Bible real. I don't see the herds coming out. I don't see you flocking out. 
Hey, let me hear that preacher. Let me receive that sin. No, many go away of death, and you make the Bible real. Jesus already said. He said, enter the straight gate, and yet, go ye to the world and preach the gospel, but they're all not going to come out. Now, where's the masses of people on your side? Where's the group of people? The Bible said they won't be here. So what's wrong with your mega church? Yep. You're already defined the word of God because Jesus said few would be there. So the mega church must be preaching something against the gospel of Christ. Everything's wonderful in the mega, in the mega church, but the Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. You take that to your white teeth preacher on the television. By the way, is that guy going to visit you at the funeral home? Will that guy come into the hospital and visit you on the television? Is that guy's God able to deliver you from the flames of hell? There's only one God that will get you out of the flames of hell. Now, there's a big G God, and there's a small G God. And I could rant and rave on the small G, but I won't. I'll tell you about the big G. Jehovah, God, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You will die one day. That's why we're here. We're here for your future funeral. We are here before you die. And we are telling you, before you drop dead, before you have a heart attack, before those, tire those, those car tires jump the fence and hit you in the head in the stands, it has happened, it just happened last week. Last place, they had car parts go into the stands. Imagine your Christian driver sending you off into hell. I tried to stay off NASCAR, but it's the holiday. We are here before your death to tell you that you're going to die, and you need to die before you die by the shed blood of Jesus Christ to wash your sins away. You need to come through that straight gate to be saved. You, oh, I'm going to heaven. I want to go to heaven. you got to do it by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ is not to be taken orally. He's to be taken by faith in your heart with your mouth confession. Again, Isaiah 118, God says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. What are you doing about your sins? If they're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you're cleansed. If you have no sins, the Bible says all have sinned, and all have come short of the glory of God. My Pope is taking care of my sins. Ha <laughs> ha. You mean that guy's been stealing money from third world countries? Your priest is taking care of your sins? Uh, what's he doing with the children behind closed doors? Well, I got a petition from my prophet. If I, if I do this, I can gain into whatever land. There's no whatever land. There's heaven, and it's wrought by Jesus Christ. And the Bible says it has to be God's Christ. For there's another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit Paul tells us about. you got to make sure that your salvation is rests upon the biblical Jesus found in the Scriptures. That biblical Jesus, first of all, has to be God, has to be Jesus. There's no other way. We all believe... Let me go to Acts 20, 28. 
I don't really want you to think I'm lying to you, because I could lie. We all believe that Jesus died on that cross. I mean, you, you paint eggs and stuff like that. You have hollow bunnies, which I don't know has anything to do with Calvary. And if Jesus Christ died on that cross, and let me tell you, when he, when he was put on that cross, he was nailed to that cross. Now, when they put nails to your flesh, you're going to bleed. But see, before he was nailed to the cross, he was whipped and punched by Roman centurions. I would call them today your Navy SEALs. And when they had Jesus standing amongst them, man, they let him have it. Because the Bible says he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. Before Jesus Christ went to the cross, he was already bleeding. The Bible says that his back, from that whip, from the cat of nine tails, was ripped open like a farmer's field. That's where fruit come from. In case somebody didn't know that. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, he was bleeding. So, Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, and Acts 20:28 20, says, To feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. The church of God, his own blood, that's God's blood. That means Jesus Christ, who bled on that cross, bled God's blood. That means he had to be God. Now, there are certain religions out there that will come knocking on your door, and they don't profess Jesus to be God. Don't take their, their magazine. Let me give you advice about those people that come to your door. Awake unto Jesus Christ, the righteousness. Jesus who is God, and God who is Jesus. Now, our salvation is wrought upon what Jesus done. He was brutally tortured for my sins and for yours. And that is the way that God has sought for salvation. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now, that took... I'm trying to think right, right now. Because it happened early in the morning. Over a 24 hour spread, if not longer, Jesus Christ was bruised and whipped and punched and had his beard pulled. And suffered and died and bled for our sins. That 24 hours can save your soul. Or if you want to count on your own way of doing sin, if you want to pay for your own sin, you can have God place you in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. And you'll never get out because you'll never pay for your sin. Now you can choose the 24 hours of Jesus' suffering or you can choose you burning for eternity. And God would be holy and right by placing you into hell because He has sent us with the Bible to tell you how not to go to hell. Now how do we know that there's a hell? The Bible says so. Jesus tells us about a hell. And what is man's number one expression? Go to hell. If I were to ask anyone to show of hands how many people have said, go to hell, and you got three people here that are preaching and tell you not to go to hell. But you don't want God to tell you, go to hell. 
Imagine the holy, righteous Jehovah saying to you, Go to hell. That's it. You're done. You are finished. You will no longer get mercy and grace. And the stupidest thing about it is you do not have to go to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. You know, the Bible says we're, but we're as sheep. I look at you all, I see you as a bunch of... You're just a bunch of dumb animals heading off to slaughter. Not going to listen to him, he's too loud. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, there's no God, there's no hell. You'll find out one day there is. And you cannot tell God... I never knew. Because don't let him call, don't let me have him approach you at judgment. And say, God, I never knew. Yeah, but remember that time you went to that farmer's market in Daytona Beach, Florida, USA, and that guy preached? Oh, yeah, him. Oh, yeah, him with the Bible that preached my son, who you are standing before right now, and he told you exactly what God has has meant for you to do? Listen, God is not willing that any should perish. He wants you to be saved. He's not going to force you. It's called a free will. And the truth is that Jesus saved. And yet the Bible says Jesus, of himself... I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no life without Jesus Christ. What kind of life is it when you're in an oven for all eternity? You say, well, God will never send me there. Yes, He will. Because Jesus Christ, Him, who is God, has came that might be paid for your sins. And you don't have to go to hell. But if you reject what God has said, God in His Word will put you in hell. And you don't have to go. That holy, loving, righteous God will throw you into hell. And if your preacher says not so, he's probably going there too. Not all preachers are saved. Read 2 Corinthians 11. Especially in 2017 in America. Satan's now spreading his ministers all over the world, but America's full with them. See, I'm your radio dial you can't turn. You can't get the remote control and change my channel. That's why I like street preaching. On the radio, if you were to get a guy who's going to preach the, the truth and the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, you turn the dial. If you're flipping through the channels on the TV and you were to get somebody to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you change the channel, but you can't change the channel here. You're going to hear what God has to say. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You don't realize the love that we have. The sacrifice that we come here with the gospel in order for you to get saved. There's a guy over there who has a sign for, for, he wants you to give him money. He wants you to give, he wants you to give of, his, of you. 
and we have a sign here that proclaims that God has given of himself. is such a good ministry because guess what? Fruit. We don't know what the fruit is, but the fruit is the condition why we have sin. When Eve and Adam disobeyed God and ate that fruit, then came sin, hospitals, police cars, fire departments, death, cancer. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Life comes by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. So we stand where Adam and Eve rejected God's word by taking that fruit, and we are standing here at a fruit palace, and you reject what God has said to believe on Jesus Christ. We reversed it. But the same sin is by rejecting Jesus Christ. You may blame Adam and Eve, okay? But what are you going to do about your sins? Are you going to do what Adam and Eve did, reject the Word of God? Or are you going to go against your grand, 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 grandparents and just say, okay, God, I want to do what you said this time? There's no middle road. There's no purgatory. If you die in your sins, you will burn in hell for eternity. What's the best way to show you eternity that I know? There will be a there is a clock in hell. There isn't, but this is an illustration. There's a clock in hell. And God says you can get out at 1 o'clock, but there's no hand. Your expectation is I will get out of this place as you burn forever, never getting out of that place. And you will hate God? And you will hate yourself for hating God? Hell, the lake of fire is a place of hate and agony, and pain, and suffering. Let me find this other place in the, in the scriptures real quick. I know it's in there. Or to turn the pages. We stand here, sit here, walk here, at a farmer's market. Now you can get, I see grapes, I see uh, melons, strawberries, some are good, some are bad. Look below the good ones. I see tomatoes. There are wonderful fruit here on the top that you can buy at this farmer's market. But let me show you what God's fruit is. Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You want love? you got to come to God. What is the love of God? His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You want joy? When you finish that bottle, you got to buy a new one. And yet God has a fruit called joy. You want peace? Jesus already said that the, that the world's peace is temporal. And yet the peace of God can go on forever. There's greater fruit that can be met through God here in Daytona Beach right now if you were to come out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, the Bible said fruit of the Spirit, singular. It all comes in one batch and it don't go bad. And God don't put the good fruit on 
the top with the bad fruit on the bottom. It's all good fruit. It's all delicious. And he offers us fruit of the Spirit because Adam and Eve took the fruit that God said don't eat. So that one fruit that put us in sin, God says if you believe on my son, I'll give you nine fruit. That's not a bad deal, is it? You mean if I were to come to Jesus Christ and be washed of my sins, I can go to heaven? Yes. I can please God? Yes. And I'll get love, joy, peace, love, so yes. By Jesus Christ. What if I don't believe on Jesus? You get hell. And then you get out of hell and get the lake of fire. Out of the fire, in, out of the pan and into the fire. That's where that expression comes from. The Bible, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I have believed on Jesus Christ. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now I may fear the death itself because I'm a wimp. I don't want a torturing death. But in death itself, the Bible says I have a hope. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And yet, there are books where Christians suffered and burned and still had peace in their death. Love, joy, peace comes by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You don't get that in hell. You don't get a permanent love, joy, peace from alcohol. Matter of fact, alcohol may make things worse if that drunk driver hits one of your family members. Alcohol ruins a family. And there are two people who stand here and, and prove to that fact what alcohol does in a family. That's a great fruit. The fruit of the Spirit doesn't make you hang over the toilet bowl. And it never runs out. The fruit of the Spirit comes by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if Jesus Christ is the life, and the fruit is speaking about of the Holy Spirit, and Christ is the life, that fruit is always alive, it is always well, and it's always available to get. He that has the Son shall see life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. What is the wrath of God? It's hell. Back to Mark, uh, Matthew 7, 7. 7, chapter 7. Mark 7, 7. Let's read what else he says. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wave, uh, ravening wolves. I won't get on that one. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Hey, hey. You know what I know by the fruit of these dealers here at the farmer's market? They don't love God. Because they won't come out here and stand up for God. And yet the Bible says in Romans 10, Believe with thy heart and confess with thy mouth. Hey, vendors, if you love Jesus Christ, come over here and open up your mouth for Jesus. Do men gather grapes of, of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So you are either a good tree 
Oh, you're a corrupt tree. Psalms chapter 1. I'll let you read that. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is he every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Get his card. Hospital. I'm getting better. I have a lot of hospitals. Right after we called you to check his teeth, he ended the next day ended up in the hospital. Yeah, that's what I saw. The love of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you come over here and say, Preacher, we need more love. you got to preach more love. I am Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That is a sacrificial love that God gave of Himself, His Son, to suffer and die that you may have life. If there was no love of God, He would just let us live and die and go into hell. Hell's not love. Hell is bad. Don't preach about hell. And we have to preach about hell because that's where you're going. You don't realize when you hear the message and preaching of hell that we are here because we don't want you to go there. We want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no love without God. If you don't know God and His Son, Jesus Christ, you don't know what love is. So don't think in your mind, oh, he's not preaching love. If you don't know Jesus Christ, shut up. Because you don't know what love is. I do. Because I know love by Jesus Christ. He laid down his life that we may live. He did not have to do that. The love of God, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, the love of God is. He is despised and rejected of men. As you right now, you have no love. Because you are despising and rejecting Jesus Christ. You have no love because you don't have Jesus Christ. For God is Jesus and Jesus is God and God is love. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The love of God that you want, you don't want that love. You despise and reject love of God, and yet you stand there with your thoughts, oh, he ain't preaching love. You don't know love unless you know Jesus Christ. Surely he has borne our grief. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ, a prophecy. Carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Well, you can be smitten of God without Jesus Christ in hell. God will reject you by rejecting Jesus Christ. God will be unloving to you by rejecting the love offering of God, Jesus Christ. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was whipped. He was beaten. He had his beard pulled. He was mocked. He had nails. He was bruised for our iniquities. Those Roman soldiers punched Jesus in the face. Now you can have God punch 
punch you in the face in eternity. The lake of fire the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And you're going to tell me that you are better and more worthy than Jesus Christ. And you're a fool. You're going to say that what you can do can outdo what Jesus Christ suffered and died so you can go to God. Jumping over Jesus, the holy, the righteous. You can say your religion is better than Jesus Christ. What did your religion do for your sin? What did Mary do for your sin? And yet Jesus Christ suffered, suffered, suffered. If you want to do your own sins, you will suffer, and suffer, and suffer. Now your sins can be put on the suffering of Jesus Christ, or your sins can be put upon your suffering. And the suffering of Jesus Christ was about over 24 hours. If you want to suffer for your sins, you will do it for all eternity. And all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? Hell. What else can you be saved from? A, a, a word that has not been preached today. It's not found in churches. The Bible records in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? A guarantee that's probably taken out of modern Bible. See, what I'm preaching right now is you don't want you want the love of God, but you don't want hell. Without the love of God, you're going to hell where there is no love. John Lennon would love to believe on Jesus Christ and know what love is. And yet God's getting the last laugh of John Lennon in his remarks about Jesus. In the Gospel of Luke, a man in hell wants us to tell you about Jesus Christ. Because there's no love. There's no mercy. There's no grace when you pay for your own sins. And you can pay for your own sins, but I advise you not to. The payment is harsh, and the payment's all eternity if you want to do it your way, as Frank Sinatra, probably another man in hell. Hoping that all his fans right now, burning in hell, if that's where he is, would say, Hey, listen to that preacher and believe on, me, on Jesus Christ. And I know by the mercy of God that somebody here is a John Lennon fan and a Frank Sinatra fan. I don't know where I dug those names up from. See, the choice is right now. The love of God is Jesus Christ. The sins have been paid for within a 24-hour period upon the cross and the empty tomb seals Christianity. Or you can pay for your own sin. I advise you not to. The wages of sin is death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast in off into the lake of fire, Revelation 20. It's heaven by Jesus Christ, it's hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. That's the message. That's the salvation set forth. That is the way of righteousness, Jesus Christ. And why do you keep coming here every week so that you will know that your life is coming to an end? And yet when you die, it will never end. And 
we want you with God and not Satan. We want you to have life and have it more abundantly. And that life is by Jesus Christ. God manifested in the flesh. The son of Mary, who had other children. Who is God, and God is the son. Who was sinless. That means anything unlike me and you. He was approved of God. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God approved. And there's coming a time, I don't know when, when it's going to happen, I hope today. There's coming a time when God's going to call His bride away through Jesus Christ. And that may come in our lifetime. It may. I don't know. I'll tell you another reason right now outside of hell why to get saved if the Lord comes in our time. He's coming. But if He comes in our time and you're able to hear this message, I'll tell you why another reason to get saved right now if the rapture were to happen. There will be seven years of hell on this earth and no Gentile can get saved unless he represents and helps the nation of Israel. That's the only way of salvation. So, if the, if the rapture happens, you got to help that Jew to be saved. It's not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ then. I guess this will be a tribulation message before the tribulation and before the rapture. Maybe hopefully if I'm preaching this message, maybe the rapture will happen, the Lord wants me to preach about it, and we go away and you say, oh, what do I do during the tribulation? Help those Jews. But the Lord will call His church home today, tomorrow, next week, hopefully today. You're not going to realize what hell on earth is until Satan rules. So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? If the rapture happens during this time, you won't go through the tribulation period. The worst thing that happens if you get saved right now and you go absent from the body and present with the Lord, hey, you still go to heaven. And you still miss the tribulation. And you get a place called glory, New Jerusalem. Where there's no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. How's that? Man, that beats any health care program. And man, the life insurance is beyond the Jesus paid the premium. Eternal life without Jesus Christ is hell. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the straight gate. Life is by Jesus Christ. Life begins at Calvary, where Christ hung on the cross, died for our sins according to Scripture, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Allah never done that. Buddha never done that. No Hindu God ever done that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Even if I suffer persecution, the love, the joy, the peace, that... Listen, I've been through all kinds of events in my life. And that fruit of the Spirit has been wonderful comforting. The Bible says He is the comforter. I don't need alcohol. I don't need tobacco. I don't need drugs. 
Man, I'm high on Jesus Christ. And I forget which book Paul says, there were people of God who were addicted to the ministry. I'm addicted to Jesus Christ and the Bible. Come on the winning side. Oh, by the way, it's free. No charge. Tell that to your dealer. Tell that to the cashier. The salvation of Jesus Christ is free. And it's simple.